Today we're talking mechanicals for a modern spec house. We're out here today again at the spec house in Oakland County. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the mechanical systems because you want to get this stuff right from the get-go. You don't want to be stuck at the end of your project with systems that don't function. Take a look inside with me today and you'll see some of the items that are going to be great for future longevity of this house and for future proofing for the homeowners that move in. This spec house we're standing in is 3,500 square feet. Just finished here in Michigan where we get cold winters and hot summers. So you gotta plan for everything. Building a spec house in an efficient way, especially with mechanicals, is really crucial to avoid future homeowner problems. My favorite one of the mechanical electricals is electrical. Now electrical is very important in a modern spec house. Today's appliances might not use as much energy as the ones in the past, but they do demand a clean and efficient system. This includes having a lot of devices on water safe outlets known as a GFI. Now this can be accomplished either at the breaker or at the device on the wall. In this case, we chose to do it at the device on the wall. Do the homeowners a favor and label everything really good. <laughs> There's nothing more painful when going into a house and having no clue what the breakers do. Starting your plumbing system with a good hot water heater is very crucial. Now we have here an 80 gallon natural gas fired insulated hot water heater. This is traditional, not tankless. Now tankless is good and there's a debate whether it actually saves any energy because while it's on, it's sucking in tons of BTUs. And the great thing about this is we have tons of heat on demand. We have five bathrooms in this house. If you're taking multiple showers at the same time, that's gonna have a huge demand and you wanna have some energy storage. Think of this as a water battery where it stores that heat ready for use. This is a power vented design. So the advantage of this is we don't need a chimney coming up the side of the house going out to fresh air. This power vent is a PVC. It's much more efficient and just shoots out the side of the house so we can save some money and complexity, especially with today's codes. And very important is to prep for an option in the future to have built-ins in the basement. So for example, we have everything set here for a toilet, sink, and shower. That way, you don't need any pumps or any special products later on, and you can easily put in a bathroom in the basement, which again, adds value to the house for both the homeowner and for the builder. Now, starting from the water system behind me, we have all poly lines. So we don't have to worry about anything metal or lead or any type of corrosion that might happen. So this is a PEC system. Now we start off here with a one inch line. This is important because our cold water one inch line is gonna to go to everything, including our outdoor taps and our sprinkler system. Irrigation systems are run efficiently with high volumes of water for short periods of time, thus eliminating a lot of evaporation. We wanna make sure the outside taps have plenty of water, and since we have five bathrooms in this house, we need to make sure that they have enough flow, especially with a sink and a big bathtub upstairs. These days, PEX is the obvious choice for plumbing, especially when you're doing a spec house. It lasts forever, it's been tested, and it saves about 20 to 30% over the installation of copper pipes. It both saves the plumbers a lot of time because they don't have to do the brazing with a flame, but it also is great because it's flexible and requires less connections, which means less chance of leaks. You always wanna minimize the amount of connections on your system. Now we chose a main line with spikes coming off of it for each device. This is gonna be good because that main line is gonna have a volume of water in it that is smaller combined than all the different faucets would have if you used a hub and spoke design like some of the new places do. These manifolds, while they do have some advantages, we don't love them because think about turning on uh, two sinks in the same bathroom. If those sinks were both fed from a manifold in the basement, each one of those lines would have to fill up from the basement all the way to the sink, and you wouldn't get any advantage of turning on one sink and getting warm water, and then turning on the other sink or a shower, these would still have cold water. So by using a main line that runs up throughout the house, then once that main line is warm in the morning, all the other devices coming off it just have a short run between that main line and the device like a sink, and that water is warm much quicker. Now talking heating and cooling, we got two units behind us. That's because this is a large house and we have two separate zones. This is good for two reasons. 
First of all, efficiency. Think about it. You can have everyone upstairs for the night and you can turn your temperature down in the downstairs area of your house in the winter and turn it up a couple degrees in the summer, thus eliminating the amount of energy you need to put into that zone instead of heating the whole house to one temperature. It also provides greater comfort. Upstairs, you can get the heat rising throughout the day and making the house hot in the summer, colder in the winter. So having two zones is a must in these bigger houses. It also provides a layer of redundancy. These are both great units. They're 97% efficient, but with these higher efficiency units, you do sometimes have error codes that come with all the safety sensors, especially with the CO2 and condensation. So having a second system for a backup is well worth it. Um, each one of these you know, runs right around $5,000 installed. So nothing is gonna break the bank when you're talking about a massive home like this.